It's 8.41 right now, and uh, rain finally stopped. It's definitely cold, but we got visibility. Hopefully those bucks have just been bedded while it was raining and we'll get up and feed a little bit. So we just have to pretty much try to stay vigilant on the glass. So that's the plan. finally stopped so that's been awesome we were able to get a fire going kind of a yard sale going on um, just trying to gear out it's been definitely an interesting morning we had two hunters show up on this ridge where I've been seeing the deer feeding and I'm assuming they must have seen the buck last night because they were looking up on the hill where he had fed off yesterday evening and they sat there for a little bit then they started pushing trees over, making a bunch of noise. I'm assuming they were just trying to spook a deer, thinking that if he was up there, they'd see him and shoot him. Nothing happened. They left. So that was pretty cool. And saw some other hunters up on the skyline. One of them was glassing with his rifle scope. That was awesome. So yeah, opening morning has been, um, it's been something. I don't really know how to describe it, but something. It's too bad yesterday was an opening morning, but it just is what it is. That's why it's hunting. So we're going to keep glassing and uh, grab some food and see what happens. It's raining again, it's 2.30 and we've heard eight gunshot, nine gunshots today. Seven over here behind us, six of them at one time. So that was cool. And then we literally just heard two gunshots somewhere over in the timber where the bucks have been living. So apparently somebody stomped in there and Got a shot at something. That's where, that deer That's where he's been living. Did they shoot a horn off him? The guy's got like an antler in his hand. Man, that's brutal. It's uh, it's the deer we've been chasing. It appears the guy shot the horn off, which is, I don't know, I, I shouldn't even say what I think of that. Um, it's a bummer, because that's a gorgeous deer. Oh, wow. Not how you plan opening morning, opening day to go kind of leaves you like uh, I don't know feeling like you're starting from square one after I've probably been in this unit for this might be my 18th day and I feel like I don't I gotta just start hunting, hunting blind basically I mean tripods around somewhere but with all the banging and those guys over there I've who knows where he's gonna go. Man, that sucks. 18 days it led me here. 
and to put it plainly, I was bummed. Now you could say, it's just a deer, Zach, and you'd be right. But at this point in my hunt, this was the deer. We're back up on the mountain in our little glassing spot and tomorrow is the opener of rifle. Um, this morning was a good morning. I turned my number one target buck back up. He shed his velvet and he's back up on that same hill. He was up there this morning feeding. Holy smokes, dude. How lucky is that? Oh, I wish it was opening morning right now. We'd be hauling booty and shooting this deer. I was in here yesterday all day. I didn't see him. I actually had seen that. We're calling him the tripod buck just because his back right is kind of similar to a tripod in certain regards. But um, he was on that little low ridge. I haven't seen him today. I haven't seen any other deer, just this one buck. And if you're only going to see one deer, that would be the deer that I'd want to see. So I am thrilled if I wish it was opening morning because that buck would probably be dead by now. So I'm really hoping that he'll do the same thing tomorrow or the next day or whenever it is, we're going to hunt this deer for this trip. He's just an awesome, awesome deer. His horns are rubbed and already have that cool chocolate color. So man, it almost doesn't feel real. Uh, just the whole process of coming down here and just trying to really sort this all out on my own and put the time in and be able to turn up a deer like this and get back on him the day before. Well, for me, the second opening day um, is really cool. So try not to get too far ahead of ourselves. Now my story didn't start here. In short, it started months ago when I first laced my boots up to scout this country. In Long, it started a decade ago when I first got bit by the mountain muley bug. For brevity's sake, my first few muley bucks came from the prairie. But quickly my love for mountain hunting pulled me more and more often into the mountains, and soon my idea of the finest form of a mule deer buck resided high on the mountain amidst jagged peaks. In 2014, I got eyes on my first truly big deer. A late archery hunt found me eyeing up a great deer with extras, but two encounters at 30 yards left me with a full quiver of arrows. The next November, a gut feeling led me to my first solid mountain buck in my home state. Montana is no easy spot to find big mountain bucks, and I was elated, knowing it could be a while before this happened again. To hedge my bets, I built points out of state, and the following year I went on my first high country archery deer hunt. After some hard days hunting, I turned up a couple studs. Deer that you feel lucky just to see. My climb to 13,000 feet, an ensuing approach to 63 yards. All ended in failure as the wind switched just as I was settling my feet into my final shooting position. From then on I refocused on Montana, looking for the one, but with little luck. 160s abound, but that next level seemed elusive. Fast forward to 2022, and I've waited almost a decade to burn points in another out-of-state area that has big deer. Montana had my confidence on the decline, but I felt like I was doing all the right things. So I burned my points. There is no right year, no best winter, no right amount of precip the year before. Hell, I'd waited twice as long as I wanted to to come hunt here. It was time to go test my process, challenge myself, and see if I knew anything about mountain mule deer.
Having this tag in my pocket was exciting because I was able to go test my process in new mountains. Montana is a tough state when it comes to mountain muleys, and most of the time it makes you feel like you don't know what you're doing. Success there might be hard, but my instincts told me I was doing a lot of the right things. So I started with scouting. For me, hunting is about learning and understanding based off my own intuition and skills. So rather than asking from spots from friends and colleagues, I wanted to truly test myself by finding my own areas. So I scoured maps, looking for areas that had habitat I felt could hold more mature deer. Maps only do so much though. Boots on the ground is when you really learn the area. And so I put camp on my back and lived in the high country. Let my eyes do as much walking for me and let the deer lead me to the best spots. It's long days behind the glass, sizing up bucks, sizing up more bucks, breaking down camp, putting it in your pack, and heading to the next spot. Well, first full day of scouting down here and uh, turning up a lot of bucks, which is a good thing. It means that we're looking in the right spots. Um, seen probably 30, 35 bucks. I came in last night around four, left the truck at four, got in here around 6.37. So haven't spent a ton of time in here, but we're seeing a lot of deer. It's crazy. Montana, you would have seen maybe three by now. Um, and I've seen 35. So it's nice to be in some game rich mountains for a change. So we're still searching for the one. We've got one deer over here definitely in the 160s might be pushing into low 170s so we're gonna keep looking though um definitely some traffic in this basin i can tell and i believe there's an outfitter camp in the bottom so we're just kind of trying to get a lay of the land and do our homework and hopefully be set up well for opening day Got back to the truck. Zone one was not gonna be on the uh, hit list for spots to be hunting, I don't think. Yeah, we're gonna grab some food, look at the maps, and go try another zone. wraps up scouting uh, saw probably 25 30 bucks on this trip and I want to say that's over a hundred bucks for the scouting that I've done this summer which is in that six six and a half day range so I'm pretty happy with that um, haven't seen any draw droppers yet but hopefully the best is yet to come we're gonna have a decent amount of time to be in this unit hunting and uh, we'll be back in about three weeks with the bow in hand just see what happens the uh, primary goal is to get it done with the bow, so looking forward to it. All right, it's uh, day before season, and 
have been hiked in here. Glassed up top. Saw one okay four point. It's gonna be kind of over above where I'm planning on camping and then I stopped a glass here while I was hiking and I uh, just spotted a pretty pretty cool I don't even know what you'd call him. He's kind of a four by four with some extras. Um, so far so good. Uh, I think I've seen I want to say that buck's 18 for this morning. A lot of little deer, but we're going to head down the trail and just go up the trail a ways, try to find a good flat spot, figure out where water is, try to get our bearings on some good vantages to kind of hunt this drainage because I've seen some nice deer in here and it's just, it's worth spending some days in here hunting. So we're in here. We're doing it. Super solid first day. Tomorrow is opening morning and I've got some good prospects turned back up. I found a couple new deer and I think a deer that I had scouted in here that I thought was gonna be a good buck, so. This morning started out pretty exceptional and it just got even better. We just turned up the deer that I came in here to try to find. And when I first saw this deer back in July on my first scouting trip, I thought he was gonna be probably like a 180s type buck. Just had a really cool frame, great look to him. And it was literally one glance this morning through the spotter, I knew this was the deer. And he is blown up, definitely bigger than I thought he'd be. I bet he's scratching at that 200 inch mark. I mean, straight four by four, eye guards, kickers, pretty much probably the dream deer that I've been hoping to kill since I started hunting the mountains. Uh, didn't expect him to be this big. I actually thought the straight four by four that I saw yesterday and this morning was the deer, but I was wrong. And then there's a third really nice buck in here. He's a four by four and his top right has a crown on it. So. So far today has been pretty exceptional. From here, it's just gonna be a game of patience, I feel like, you know, deer of this caliber and, you know, all these three deer living in the same area, we're just gonna have to be patient and watch them and try to find a mistake in their armor. And um, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be a battle probably of mental toughness and not physical toughness. Nothing really too exciting in there. Well, we're still here, glassing. It's been a good 12 hour shift for day one. And uh, our big buck's bedded back kind of where he's been bedded all day. He got up and came out and fed for a while around three o'clock. And the wind was just really gusty and it was kind of favoring going up the mountain and towards him. So we didn't really feel like we had to play. And then the other three bucks that he was with yesterday and first thing this morning, they showed up probably six, 700 yards, kind of same elevation, but further over to the left. So we just kind of kept tabs on them and 
we're going to call it a day, drop down, grab some water, go to camp, get a meal in our bellies and get some good sleep and then be back up here for tomorrow morning. So hopefully the deer will get into positions not so good for them today. They were pretty on point. So we'll just try to be patient and hope they slip up soon. five o'clock just like clockwork the buck got up at like 3 3 30 fed over fed for almost two hours and pretty much stomped right back to the same bed that he's been in so if history repeats itself he's going to get up probably between 6 45 and 7 7 15 and start feeding over we're going to grab our stuff right now make a big loop get over on his elevation and just side hill push in Fingers crossed, the thermals stay good. I mean, it's a mountain of rock, so you'd think that it's been heating up all afternoon. The thermals should just carry up that thing, and hopefully we intercept him tonight and put an arrow through him, so. Fingers crossed, we're gonna grab our stuff and go. Well, we're up on the hill here and we're gonna ditch packs. We're on about the same elevation as him. And uh, it's just before six o'clock, so we're gonna take the next 30, 40 minutes to just real slow, try to sneak over and get in position and wait. So, or I won't be much of an update from here on in, so. When you're hunting big bucks on public land, it's definitely hard to know what the right decision is, what the right move is. But I think you've got to just try to come up with some sound tactics and try to execute on them. You know, where this deer was at was steep. It was rocky. And you get in there, you feel good, and, you know, you kick one rock down the hill. And then you start second-guessing, like, did he hear it? Did he blow out of there? And you just have to kind of stick to the mission and unfortunately you know it gets late winds one second are great next second they're blowing right over to where that buck is at and there's really nothing else you can do other than just sit there hope he shows up and wait it out till dark Thank you. 
you know, high juice to try to bump up the spirits. Because right now they're pretty low. The bucks are winning. And, um, it's really nothing funny because there's nothing funny happening all the time. I'm just sitting in the dirt and coming over here and spooking bucks. But at least bucks were spooking within bow range now, so. I guess you chalk that up as kind of like a half win. Now we're going to go stomp just to, mostly to punish ourselves. We're going to climb up on top of this mountain. Let's see if that makes us feel better. Usually it does because we're kind of twisted like that, but. We're in the mountains. Could be worse. A lot worse. We'll be happy in five. Yesterday didn't really pan out as far as finding any new bucks, so we came back up to our trusty spot this morning. We've been glassing for about an hour. Haven't seen any bucks yet, so there's a chance that maybe we bumped more than one yesterday morning, but we've had a lot of other hunters in this basin. There's actually a camp probably within 500 yards, so not sure what happened, but if we don't turn up any deer here in the next hour, we'll probably pull camp. This is my last day of food anyways, and get out of here and maybe go try another spot for the last couple days of the hunt. about an hour hiked in to a new spot and looks good we we're coming up the trail we looked off to our left and there's quite a bit of smoke that appears to be coming out of this meadow over here so uh, appears to be the beginning of a forest fire so we figured we probably should go check this out before we go up the trail our trucks are only a mile and a half down Canyon so Probably the smart thing, but the unfortunate thing is to go see what's going on and just kind of assess the situation. So we're gonna cross the creek and go check her out. Yeah, it's definitely a fire. So uh, we got a buddy reporting it and kind of checked it out. Sam used to fight fires, so we feel like it's probably safe to go on with our plan. Um, if the winds stay down, it cools down tonight. I feel like they should be able to send a group of guys in here tomorrow and get this thing out of control, but not what you love to see when you go into a new spot. So we're gonna on up the canyon and keep hunting. I think you could say this about a lot of different types of hunting, but high country mule deer hunting, I think probably the hardest part of it is, is enjoying the challenge of it. It's physical, it's tough, it's not easy to find the big deer and, um, you know, to kill them is even harder and it is a challenge and I said that's what I wanted and, and that really is what I wanted, but it's a lot easier to say that before the season or you know, when you want to go hunt a new area, kind of at the initial stages of any hunt, then you get into the hunt, and if you've found a big deer and it hasn't panned out, it, it's a lot harder to kind of swallow the enjoyment of being challenged and feeling like you're a little bit down and out, and not just kind of sticking to that same process, and, you know, switching spots, running into the fire, being up in the high country, not seeing the deer, it has your wheels spinning in it. It has you kind of second guessing a lot of things and it is a tough pill to swallow to say, Hey, I just got to dig in and do the things I know that have worked 
and we'll just keep putting the time in and another opportunity is going to come up. And so I think that's probably one thing that most, if not every mule deer hunter struggles with. I hate buck hunting. It's smoky today. All we've seen are little bucks. It's hard to glass anywhere. <sighs> this is just a part of the hunt where you start to feel down on yourself and might be the end of the bow hunt. It's possible. We're gonna sit here and bang our heads into our phones looking at maps and then make a decision, but it's not looking promising. Considering that we only have a day left and we didn't turn up any nice bucks this morning, I think it's best that we just jet out of here and we'll tack an extra day on the beginning of the rifle hunt. So we just broke down camp and we're gonna throw the packs on, get out of here. Now all that just brings us back to where this film started. Back on the mountain, turning up my number one buck the day before season, and then watching as other hunters killed him on opening day. Not the way I ever envisioned the opener of rifle going. All that time, the work, the patience, the process, and this is how that part of the story would end. It wasn't my deer, but damn it sure felt that way. Well. That deer's dead, so no sense in sitting around crying about it. Can't hunt them when they're dead, so gotta go find a new deer to hunt. I know there's more big ones out there, but that one was pretty nice, so we're gonna load up. Probably head out to the north, see if we can climb this ridge, and maybe just check out some new country. You never know, some stuff could get bumped around. And we're just going to have to get back to hunting, just kind of stick to the process of covering country and glassing and just seeing what we can turn up. So it's, we've seen some nice bucks in this area and they all can't get killed today. So we're going to keep hunting. Funny how mule deer hunting can teach you a lot about yourself as a human. When that buck got killed, a part of me felt wronged, but there was nothing wrong with any of it. It was public land, and those hunters had the right to hunt the way they saw fit. My happiness was wrapped up in one deer, one thing that no one cared if I got, but it hurt. And I knew my success ultimately hinged on just getting back to hunting and moving forward can't kill bucks that are already dead. It's just afternoon. Um, it's been raining for the last probably 10 hours straight. It's let up just a little bit right now, so we're probably gonna try to grab our stuff and just go slowly work this timber. We know a couple of the bucks have been using it that we're living on that mountain, so it's been pretty tough to glass with the rain and the moisture and how quiet it is and how knock down all of our scent will be we feel like it's definitely worth a walk a very slow walk 
do the timber and just see if we can find Mr. Tripod. Um, interesting conditions, but that's hunting. So we'll uh, grab our gear and head that way. Moving left. Well, our bad luck continues. We were sneaking up our second little ridge, kind of thinking that the deer had been staying in the timber. It was a risky move, but we felt like the conditions were good for it, and Somehow that buck was up above us on the hill. I glassed up there but never saw him. And just glanced up there and he was looking down at us. 260 yards. It was that tripod deer. So our bad luck continues. He spooked before I could sit down and get a shot. So not a lot of positive going on other than we did see a deer that I'd shoot so that's good, but the fact that we bumped him is frustrating. Over the years of hunting, I've experienced plenty of failures. If I'd learned anything from those failures, it was that the quicker you can learn from your mistakes, find closure and move on, the better. For me, this was just as apparent now. My top two bucks were gone. Glassing for tripod each morning felt like clinging to the thinnest thread of hope that you know won't hold. It was time to move on and continue the process. This trip would be over, but there was one more short window of time to come back. I didn't want to, but I also knew I'd regret quitting now. We're back on the road, trip number five. It ain't over till it's over is how I feel about this one. So we got four days on the books. Gonna drive in tonight, hike in first thing in the morning and just give her one more good go. So we're gonna see where the cards are gonna fall. I'm optimistic that we can find a nice deer, but we're gonna find out.
All right, it's uh, been a few hours and he cleared out and I just spotted actually what appears to be a pretty darn nice deer. Like, like maybe even a shooter. So that's super exciting. He's 616 yards, which is in the wheelhouse, but a little bit on the upper limit of what I'd like might sneak up the ridge and um, try to close the distance a little, get a better look. So we're at 371 yards and there's three bucks over there. There's another one that looks decent right behind this buck, but the fog just literally rolled in. So, hard to say if it's gonna storm, if it's gonna be foggy. We're just like, right there. More character building, more patience. All you can do is just sit here, hope it passes soon, and hopefully one of these deer It'd be nice to just get a little better look. I like frame. I don't really ever like sizing up a buck that's facing away, so hopefully they're still there when this clears. I was hoping this uh, buck would have like a big frame. He's pretty narrow, but he has big forks, so I like him. It's just, do you keep hunting? Look for the caliber deer that are possible here, or do you shoot this one? Like, I like him. He's at 520 right now, so I might try to sneak one ridge closer after I watch him for a little bit. Man, I had those deer like 200 yards. Of course, they had circled back underneath me. I should have just stayed where the hell I was at. And then some stupid does over there decide they need to run down, spook the bucks. So we may never see these deer again. So I'm really, really crushing it right now, guys. Just picked up about a, uh, man, probably six liters of water. Got 400 vert to get up on the ridge, which isn't that far, but my pack feels like it's like a million pounds. <sighs> One foot in front of the other. And then we're just gonna hunt this main ridge line, glass this side, glass the back side. Haven't seen a buck yet today. They're around here somewhere. So, up we go.
pretty sure I just got myself a buck. He has a he has a cool look to him. Is the best way to put it. Uh, outside his ears, front forks are pretty good. Cool brow tines. You know, obviously he's a little thin horned and back forks aren't huge, but I just like the look of him. And this late in the hunt, I felt like he was a deer that I'd be happy to put my tag on. So, <sighs> man, I, that was like the third buck I've seen all day. It's just been slim pickings and with two days left, I just got behind the gun to feel it out. And felt right, so. That's what you're looking for. The buck got me excited, and honestly, that's what it's all about. I'm gonna grab my stuff and uh, go over to this next little side hill and just come in on top of them and see if I can see down in there. So, lights starting to fade. Be nice to get down there before dark and uh, just kind of see what happens. Well, just put the binos down real close to where I shot him. He is piled up. He made it nowhere. So I'm just really glad that I made a good shot. That was definitely one of the tougher shots I've had. I'm glad I've been practicing a lot this year and uh, made it happen. Got lucky I'd say because that buck didn't have to stick around and let me set up all my cameras get my range, my dope, build a rest, so thanks Buck. Oh, this is awesome. Sweet deer. There he is, piled up. The problem is that he kind of came down this hill past the bottom, which we don't want him to go down. And uh, I'm gonna have to set the camera up and we're gonna try to drag this guy onto the ridge. Yeah, I don't know how this is gonna go. Could be barely. Wish me luck. That's why you lift in the gym. So you can drag bucks. There he is. He's a really cool buck, man. I'm pumped on him. Not the biggest buck on the mountain, but he's mine. I worked super hard for this deer. And uh I'm honestly pumped. He just had a sweet look to him, man. Just a really like great deer. Pretty similar to the one that I was hunting, just smaller forks, no kickers, but I love it when they got big brows. He's probably got three, four inch brows. In the end, the process worked. I'd grown as a mule deer hunter, but not without some challenge and reflection along the way. Most importantly, I'd felt I'd grown as a human. We all want to shoot the big one, but if that's our only focus, hunting will never provide lasting happiness. Life tells us that in many other ways, only by embracing the journey and the process, by understanding that highs come with lows, and by being grateful in the days we spend on the mountain, will we truly find happiness in hunting.